All right, so we're right at the top of the hour, and so we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, if you're just joining, please put into the chat uh, your what you teach and where you're from, and uh, love to get to a sense to know who's who's attending the webinar. So welcome everybody. My name is Alec Harris. I'm honored to be president of GIA Publications. Welcome to this amazing webinar, teaching about teaching with heart, tools for addressing societal challenges through music. Uh, really uh, amazed to have this incredible panel with us and to introduce the, the main uh, author of the material, Jason Max Ferdinand. Jason, uh, someone that I've gotten to know very well over the past few years, someone who I'm honored to count as a friend and someone who is, uh, of course, he's full professor, chair of the music department, director of choral activities at Oakwood University where he conducts the amazing Aeolians of Oakwood University. And he maintains a very active schedule as a presenter, adjudicator, guest conductor for high schools, collegiate and church choirs throughout North America, Asia, Europe, and the Caribbean. And uh, he will be leading things from here. Just one other uh, word, the webinar is gonna go on for about 45, 50 minutes or so. We're gonna save the last 10 minutes for questions. So if you do have any questions, there's a if you look, there's a special button called Q&A. You can put any questions in the Q&A uh, bar and I'll be monitoring them. And then at the end, we'll come back to ask questions of this incredible panel. So with that brief introduction, I'll turn everything over to you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alec. You know, in the midst of, um, the midst of a crisis, heroes always rise to the occasion. And our frontline workers are giving all they can right now to deal with COVID-19. But Alec, I want you to know that you are our hero, a hero for music, for music education, for hymnody, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you for believing in this document and this compendium and this team. We wanna just say that we love you and we appreciate you for taking this on. So all of you who have joined us tonight from literally all over the world we see now, thank you so much for taking about 60 minutes of your time that hopefully will multiply into a lifetime of impact as we seek to educate generations to come. May 25th, 2020 will forever be a murky day in American history. Every creed and race could identify with the stinging wound of social injustice. And the very fabric of humanity was questioned and people around the world took to the streets in response. Empathy has been on full display as we've witnessed the myriad of races at all, of, at all these protests all over the world. The senseless killing of George Floyd has also aroused our sensibilities in the arts community. At arts educators, whether it's music, theater, dance, etc., it is our responsibility to address the maladies that society presents. No longer should we just turn a blind eye to such matters. No longer should we solely seek to display our musical prowess. Yes, let us achieve that mastery in our rehearsal rooms, but it should now be coupled with an intentional effort to reach hearts and to reach minds. This educational guide went through a very rewarding gestation process and is now burst. It has prodded, challenged the traditional methods of pedagogy and literature. The reflection from our societal mirror is suggesting that we take a hard look at ourselves as arts educators and seek ways to better serve the next generation of students. This body of work highlights composers and arranges that most musicians would typically not learn about at all, or perhaps learn about them much later in their life. So for example, you'll see debt referring to Robert Nathaniel Dent. Dent is brought to life. An intentional Dent, referring to Cedric Dent, is being made. And other fabulous human souls are introduced through their music. It was important to me that this compendium be put together by second line workers, teachers like you and teachers like me, who have battled and continue to battle how do we deliver a quality education product amidst all the challenges that we are facing? So it was during some unnerving conversations with some music educators from around the country that this concept was born. Teaching with heart to pour elements of curiosity, 
empathy and optimism into our classroom settings. A mere three days before the madness of COVID-19 began, the aliens were fortunate to have recorded a CD project. And you can get this project from the GIA website. Little did we know that songs such as We Remember Them, which deals with the passing of loved ones, or a song like We Shall Overcome, which got us through the civil rights movement, or a song like When I Lay Me Down to Sleep, Little did we know that these songs would all start to speak directly to the rest of 2020 and beyond. This compendium also serves to give you some principles that the aliens employ in all of our preparatory exercises. So, in a sense, you get a sneak peek, sneak peek into some of the secret sources that are used by the aliens. And we do not claim to be the creators of these per se, Nevertheless, they are built into our system. I want to say special thanks to Kim Mann and Laurie Lubzinger, who are looking on right now and who insisted that this project get done. The colleagues that you'll meet today have opened up themselves to topics that were fun, that were inspiring, but were also some very uh, uncomfortable topics. Those uncomfortable topics led to meaningful conversations on race and social injustice and our political climate. Delving into these topics left me at times with tears flowing down my cheeks. Educators who are on this webinar tonight, thank you again for coming. And we assure you that you, along with your students, will be the direct beneficiaries of these dialogues. I want to introduce our first two uh, contributors. I've long been an admirer of my colleagues and all my friends that have matriculated at the Florida State University. And it is obvious to me that they attained a quality education and the application thereof is well known throughout the world. These next two gentlemen will soon graduate from Florida State University with their PhDs in music education. Ritter St. Luke was once my high school student, my university student, my student conductor, and has joined the faculty here at Oakwood University as an assistant professor of music education. He served as our project manager for this compendium. Carlton Kilpatrick served as president of the Florida Vocal Association from 2015 to 2017, and has teaching experience at Columbia High School and Lake Brantley High School, both there in the state of Florida. Special recognition goes to Carlton for the layout of this document. Its thoughtful design proves to make this an efficient teaching tool. Gentlemen, thank you. And we look now to you as you introduce certain elements of this compendium. Well, Jason, I uh, just want to say thank you for, first off, allowing us to be a part of this project. And also thank you to everyone who was here um, for this session. It's just so rewarding to see such interest level in this in this um, presentation today so thank you for spending this afternoon with us um this weekend i had the wonderful privilege of watching a surgeon's cut on netflix and one of the uh, doctors on there was dr desi shetty and he is one of the top leading heart surgeons in the world and particularly for this one surgery that he was going to perform there was a gentleman who was in his 60s and they were told that his life was significantly shortened because he had blood clots inside of his heart. And there's only 50 doctors who've ever performed this surgery about 100 times. And he's the only one in the world who's performed it over 600 times. And so he's, he's removing these blood clots and he was very pleased with the removal of what was going on. He said, even though this operation is a low risk one, the, op the operation takes 12 hours, but the actual heart part takes two. And I say all that to say is that, you know, when Jason wanted to bring all this, this together, it takes a great team to help a surgeon, you know, operate in the operating room. And everyone here brings their own expertise, their own experiences um, to this operating room called the of heart surgery. And what we wanted to do with this is, you know, teaching with heart, are there people who are having impaired um, heart messages or in their education? Are there people who, who can do something in this time? As we all know, and Jason so eloquently stated that 2020 has been a year that has been like no other um, with all the social injustice and COVID. And I can sense that there's a lot of pulses that just need a bit of a re 
so that we can get back there and do the great work. And what you'll find here is this presentation of our many stories, many uh, experiences of the in-classroom and while they're writing it. And the best thing about it, it's not just from one lens. It's from the lens of many walks, many backgrounds, and it's a really heartfelt message. So as project manager, it was my job and alongside with Carlton, who's gonna talk about the content of it, um, to really try and capture the heart and the message of this. And after reading it I, and going through it, I have been through tears and experiences reading what the team has brought together. So Carlton is gonna sit here and just tell you more about what was inside of it. And I just hope you guys can experience throughout the rest of this what the emotional connection is for music educators worldwide. Carlton. Thank you, Ritter, and thank you all for being here tonight. It's really been a, a treat to work on this project. And my task was to take the wonderful ideas of the other panelists you're going to hear from and shape them into uh, something that was a little more cohesive that had some through lines. And I'm going to take a minute to talk to you a little bit about the document itself. We're very proud of this uh, document. It was beautifully designed by graphic artist Chad Lupo. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulty. Uh-oh, sorry everyone. The wonders of Zoom. Can you let me know if you can hear me still? We can hear you, Kelton. Okay, are you seeing my screen at least? I'm no longer seeing any of you, but can you see my screen? Yeah, we've got your screen, Carlton. Okay, I'm going to talk and we'll pretend like you're still seeing me. So Teaching with Heart is a compendium. Uh, there are 13 modules that go along with 12 tracks of the Aeolian albums. One of the track has two, two modules, and they also include over uh, four hours of heart-to-heart -heart interviews with Dr. Ferdinand, the composers and arrangers of the music, as well as the panelists you're going to hear from tonight. And um, I'm going to talk quickly about some of the things you're going to see. The first is we made use of iconography to help guide you and your students in the use of the document. There are three resource icons, read, watch, and listen. These will take you to a variety of things. It could be a blog post, an article. It's not Wikipedia links. It's, it's things that we have found that are going to specifically relate to the module. Watching could be videos of choirs, but also interviews, um, beautifully produced documentaries. Listening, obviously choirs, but also, uh, uh, again, audio blog posts and things of that nature. Then there are activities. These are divided into two categories. Respond, which is intended more for a written response, something that you can take up and use as an assessment, and discuss, which is intended more for a group discussion dynamic. But they really are interchangeable and, and could be used either way. And then lastly, we have some response icons, which would be recording yourself singing or, or speaking, performing, uh, a piece of music of your own kind of some composition exercises, as well as presenting uh, on a topic or using a presentation material such as a slide projection like this. So I'm going to show you what my module looks like. This is the module I actually wrote. It's on uh, the Pilgrim's Chorus by Wagner and arranged by Dawson. And what you're going to see is that every module, again, beautifully designed, Chad Lupo does a brilliant job, uh, here has some objectives. Those objectives are ones that you can hopefully plug right into a lesson plan for your administration for those of you that are education based. We also have included the national core art standards. Of course, there are specific state standards, but these should be able to transfer pretty easily for you as well. And then obviously, since we're dealing with some social issues, there are also social and emotional learning standards. And I'd recommend to you the book that this is based in, which you can find in the beginning of the compendium. Next, you're gonna see that each uh, of these pages has activities. There are usually three, sometimes four activities, and they're really organized into something that we intended to flow as a lesson. And then there are also delve deeper segments. That's gonna just give you some enrichment. In this case, uh, the Pilgrim's Chorus is from an opera, Tannhäuser, and here are just some more opera choruses that you might want to explore. And here's my dog making a guest appearance. I apologize for him, he's a hound dog, he can't help it. 
On the next page, you see some repertoire connections. That's going to be quality core repertoire that you might want to listen to or even consider performing that's going to relate back to the module topic. And as well as right here, you see some resources. And those are more online lessons, more online content. Again, just more things that you can use to enrich you and your students' experience. Every module ends with a project, and these projects are intended to encourage some sort of creative output. Could be performance, presentation. Sometimes uh, the, the project could be uh, making a piece of art or something that connects to one of our sister disciplines. So what is the big idea here? Hopefully you'll see that we've spent some time creating something that you can use as is, but you can also break it down and use the pieces that work best for you in a kind of choose your own adventure format. This content is appropriate for a variety of ages, experiences, and venues, church choirs, elementary school. Now, is every page going to apply to elementary? No, but we do think that there is content in there that will relate to elementary, or sometimes we've identified some elementary content in one of those delve deepers or resource areas. And um, also college choirs and community choirs. These kinds of discussions should be taking place at every level. So what are some overall themes that we hope you're gonna see in our compendium? Obviously social justice, but also how music is used as a tool for change. Music and its unique connection to emotion, obviously you know how powerful that is. As well as things you might expect, like some ideas about music theory, music history, um, some insights into composition, poetry, it's really a broad ranging document and that's why we think there's really something for everyone and we're very proud of it. And I think my, all of my colleagues again who contributed, but I thank all of you for being here. So back to Jason. Thank you so much Ritter and thank you so much Carlton. And as Carlton shared, I want to reiterate it. Um, I think choirs at all levels can definitely and arts programs at all levels can definitely benefit from this. A community choir especially in light of all the uh, remote learning that we have to do, community choirs, LDG choirs, two-year colleges, and all the way down will be the beneficiaries of, of this choral compendium. Our graphic design, as Carlton so eloquently states, and Mr. Chad Lupo really has made this document look beautiful. And at the very front, we created a dedicatory page that lists the mentors of everyone that was involved in this book. And, um, and each contributor then started their modules with a personal statement which expresses their heart. One question I get very, very often is this, how are the aliens able to sing so many varying styles of music? Well, that can be answered with one visit and one read of the next module. Cindy Ellis is a keyboard American vocalist and music educator. Cindy teaches at the Miami Arts Studio, which is a six to 12 grade public performing arts magnet school in Miami, Florida. And they have an amazing program. Cindy, thank you so much for joining us today. And please, please share with the people your contribution to this compendium. Thank you so much for having me and thank you to everyone for being here, you know, volunteering your time and our time um, to, you know, just become better music educators. Uh, so I wanted to start with that, you know, my, my philosophy of music education in a nutshell, and I am sorry I look so angry in this picture, but it is the picture in the compendium. Um, so here we go. Um, our chorus class, whether online or in the, uh, in the building, is a place where our students feel protected from harm, a place where students are free to express themselves without fear of judgment or disapproval. And there, they not only creatively develop musical skills, but more importantly, learn life lessons that will help them through wherever their journeys take them. So that's the cover of uh, my module in the compendium, The Voice as an Instrument, Jazz and Choral Music. Um, even though as a jazz vocalist myself, you, you would expect that all I do is jazz in my choral classroom. That was not true until surprisingly, almost two years ago now, um, I experienced the aeolians at acda which i'm sure most of you here did as well and this is what that sounded like about you but I heard that and I was so so inspired to bring that back into my classroom 
And you know, that Cedric then arrangement of smile. I wanted to bring it back to my classroom and now, you know, through teaching with heart, I get to bring it to your classroom. So um, a lot of the times choral directors feel, you know, unequipped or even intimidated by jazz, um, jazz voice in, in the choral classroom because you weren't introduced to it yourself um, at an early age um, or you didn't, you know, study it in your college um, classes. So, so I wanted to give you a resource because there aren't a lot of them out there uh, for you to bring this style into your students and introduce them to it. So my module goes step by step on that introduction of the jazz style uh, to your students and the history of the song Smile and stylizing a melody which Cedric Dent does so beautifully but then in the album um, we have the soloist uh, that does an, an amazing job as well. So, so it goes to stylizing a melody, improvisation, and my favorite, uh, using the voice to mimic instruments, which is scatting. Um, I have been using my module with my in-person. Miami uh, is in a, a hybrid module where I have some students at home and some students in the building. So I've been using it with both, and I wanted to show you a couple of clips of them, you know, singing Smile. So here we go. Uh, the first one is my students going back and forth between um, an I online student and the in-class student. So here we go. Mm -hmm. So this is a video I took with my cell phone here. For you, light up your face with gladness. Hide every trace of sadness. So you can go back and forth uh, between uh, online students and your entire class, or you can do it with individual students in your class and students at home, or just Zoom students. You know, you put them on the spot and say, okay, you're first, you're second, you're third, and they go off, right? Um, and you can really assess that they're actually paying attention um, in your classes. Uh, the next video I have for you is, you know, the lag. I don't, I don't know if you noticed that there is a little lag between the students at home and in the building. So I edited together. I had them through Flipgrid send me videos of them singing the entire song and in the same key, of course, because that would be a mess if it wasn't. So I put together um, a video of them singing it. Uh, these, are, these are just the middle school students. Smile, though your heart is aching, smile, even though it's breaking. thing is that through the process um, of uh, in my module you get to see your students find their own voice which you wouldn't usually do in that choral um, setting uh, there's one student I think I can just go straight to her video I had never heard just this like 1940s um, voice one second so I put together all the middle school students and then with the high school students, you know, they're more advanced, of course, so I have them working on um, scatting and improvising and growing that improvisation um, vocabulary. So here's a senior doing some scatting work. It is in F, so it's another key. <laughs> <laughs> She actually, um, that student just auditioned for the University of Miami as a jazz, she wanted to do jazz vocal performance. So you're getting to introduce your students to this style that you know they wouldn't necessarily be introduced to um, in the first place through Teaching with Heart. And that is, in a nutshell, my module. Thank you. Cindy, that is impressive. My gosh.
and they, they got most of that because of the foundation set in your module. And I see people in the chat here loving it. And um, that's so ingenious. So thank you so much. And by the way, Cedric Dens is actually on the webinar looking on. So <laughs> no pressure, everyone. And uh, Cedric was actually the soloist at the ACDA performance. Hey, Cedric, good, good, good to have you here. Thank you, Sydney. That was amazing. Um, in November of 2019, about a year ago, the Aeolians were selected to sing for the National Collegiate Choral Organization Conference. And we programmed a piece by Sean Kirshner called Away and in Danger, which is based on the Christmas carol Away in a Manger. And we needed a treble choir, and I called on our next contributor. He and his choir were brilliant in their singing and staging of that song. Robert Martinez the choral and strings director at Spencerville Adventist Academy in Maryland. He has degrees in performance, composition, and get this everyone, and religion, I guess, or panel. Even. Robert was also the brand behind the layout of the four hour worth of video interviews that accompany this compendium. Robert, thank you so much for joining us this evening and please share with our viewers your more Oh, thank you, uh, Jason. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to share with um, all these people here in this webinar. And um, I can't uh, say enough that thank you for allowing me to to be a part of the video uh, editing of the four hours of content. Um, I learned so much uh, just having those conversations with um, with Cedric Dent and, and uh, Susan Labar and all of these uh, wonderful people. So I can't say enough that just Jason, your conversations with all of these composers just really made them uh, personable to me. And, and some something that I know my students, you know, they, they see somebody on the page as a composer and, and they think they're so far off. So um, it was just wonderful to be able to be a, a part of that. But um, uh, just back to my name. My name is Robert Martinez, and I am the choir director at Spencerville Adventist Academy. Uh, SAA is a pre-K through 12th grade private Seventh-day Adventist school um, located just outside Washington, D.C. Uh, Jason Max Ferdinand contacted me last November 2019, as he had stated, to collaborate with my choir on a beautiful social justice piece called Away and in Danger for the NCCO, National Collegiate Choral Organization, performance at the University of Maryland. And it was at that concert that I first heard the pieces, which are also on the Aliens recently released self-titled album. I was touched with the renditions of composers such as Nathaniel Dett, Cedric Dent, which is here in, in this uh, webinar. Hello, Cedric. Uh, William Dawson, Evelyn Simpson Currington, and, and Adolphus Hale Stork, and Ken Burton. Um, I wanted my students to discover some of this great music and perhaps see themselves in the messages and the melodies that I heard. Um, when uh, Kim Mann and Lori Lopsinger uh, approached me about being a part of this project with Jason, I was excited to delve deeper into the music for my students, as well as other students across the United States. Uh, Dr. Ferdinand brought the educators represented here in this webinar to share and discuss what we were going through with our choirs in this pandemic in late July 2020. We discovered that each one of us was experiencing a sense of loss, a feeling of isolation and uncertainty about the future of our programs. We were faced with planning a year where our schedules could be hybrid, in class, or online only. Dr. Ferdinand challenged us to come up with a tangible resources that we all could use to keep our choirs intact and thriving during this time. We believe that teachers should have ample tools to address the ever-changing pedag pedagogical environment that COVID-19 and 2020 has presented to us. We were also very aware of social justice issues surrounding our communities and the need to address them with our students in our modules. So we understand the frustration you feel. We've been there ourselves, and we are all in this together. Uh, in my module, I follow Cedric Dent, founder of the eight-time Grammy Award acapella group, Take Six. I was deeply impressed by Cedric Dent's Examine Me. At Spencerville, we focus on sacred music primarily. Examine Me was a piece that spoke to me. Uh, his piece has a lot of uh, relevance for a school such as Spencerville. Uh, in my chapter, I focus on two pieces and how his voice 
with take six influenced his choral writing. My students were able to relate to Cedric because he is a Seventh-day Adventist Christian composer. Along with the video interviews, students were able to get to know him better. I believe this helps students to engage in the music making process when they have uh, been able to delve in deeper at a deeper level and are able to make connections to their own experiences. Um, I have also used the compendium uh, when I was away from my classroom. Our band director subbed for me one day and asked, uh, what should we do? And since uh, we're in a hybrid model, I felt that, the, less, uh, that the, the lessons in the companion would give my colleague ample information and resources to teach a lesson. And I asked her how it went afterwards and she was quite excited about the ease of use that the book provided her as a substitute. So that was my experience uh, with teaching with heart and, and, um, and how it can work with even substitutes. Thank you so much, Robert. And um, just to underscore that, I remember Carlton specifically saying that if a teacher wants to use one of these modules at 7.30 in the morning, he or she could be able to walk in at class at a.m. and use this without a glitch. And Carlton, thank you so much for, for thinking that through. And Robert, thank you so, so, so much. And again, four hours worth of these interviews with composers on this CD. But you know, by extension, what it does as well it kind of helps the students to then pull the thoughts together about other composers who you may be working on, and not necessarily the ones on this project, but it kind of gets you in that composer's space and composer's uh, line of thinking. I had the privilege of being the clinician for the Lafayette High School Choir as part of the Music for All Festival some years ago. Special shout out to Henry Leck and the Music for All team. These kids sang on such a level and it was such a delight to work with them. Ryan Marsh is their conductor and Ryan is very effective and very active in the music scene in the state of Kentucky with the choirs having appeared at KMEA and ACDA conferences. I was very moved when Ryan very transparently shared that he was uncomfortable about tackling the social justice issue through music. And let me tell you what Ryan did. Because of that fear and that, that level of being uncomfortable, Ryan decided to tackle his fear and latched on to Ken Burton's The Promised Land, which is a song that takes us from the bowels of slavery and to the promised land, as the name suggests. And the interview that we had with Ken Burton over there in London and Ryan and myself was just mind-blowing and literally had all of us Cherry eyed and I'm, I'll show you that anyone who grabs a copy of the book along with that interview, you will get to the same place. So Ryan, thank you for your bravery. And um, thank you so much for being part of this team. We could not do this without you. So Ryan, share with the people. Thanks, Jason. Um, and thank you, especially to all the teachers who are here tonight learning about teaching with heart. Uh, the fact that you're here learning and trying to find more resources is really commendable. And in my case, I wanted to find an intentional way to foster important conversations about social justice and equality. Uh, and I said in one of our first meetings uh, about this project, I said, I don't think I'm the right person to be writing this. Um, but it was important to me, uh, and it's an area in which I just sort of resolved to do better. Uh, and I'm guessing there's a lot of folks out there uh, just like uh, I was. And so I wrote the module, Social Justice, Just Us or All of Us. And I began the module with this, saying, as teachers of the arts today, I believe it is our moral obligation to make intentional efforts to foster conversations about social justice and equality. Who better than the choir director to teach students that we're all connected? We're already in the business of teaching our students that working together is what enables us to create something better than any of us can create alone. Teaching our kids to appreciate, respect, and value other cultures, and thereby others who are different, by incorporating a varied repertoire of music is the very least we can do. But the events of summer 2020 have shown us that this is not enough, and we have to do more, and we have to do better. And so it's with that thought that I uh, approached uh, working on the promised land. Uh, and in this module, the goal it really is to introduce students to the concept of social justice and to look at that through the lens of music and poetry. In The Promised Land, Ken Burton selects texts and poets that span over 200 years and two continents 
And what's evident is that these themes that these writers were dealing with uh, are just as relevant today as they were then. The module includes guiding questions. We introduce students to the concept of code switching, talking about metaphor and poetry. Uh, we set up a really powerful connection between Paul Lawrence Dunbar's We Wear the Mask, which is quoted in The Promised Land, and Maya Angelou's modern extension of that poem. Uh, and so we incorporate activities that touch on social emotional learning, uh, which is really important right now. So you can present the promised land uh, as sung by the Aeolians, or you can take the same approach with countless other pieces. And in fact, one of the activities in the lesson is to ask students to share their own favorite examples of music which advocates for social justice. And let me tell you, it's a really great way to make another connection with your students. So some really important takeaways from, from my experience in teaching this module. And first is that kids wanna talk. Uh, and they want to connect, especially right now when we're, uh, if you're like me, we're entirely virtual. We have been since the start of school. Uh, and and they, the third thing was that they're already talking about these issues, but just not inquire. And so that what we bring as, as music educators, as choir directors, what we bring to the table um, is to guide them through these discussions through a musical and poetic lens. And that's something my students had not experienced or even thought about in, in, from that perspective. And so in my experience, the depth with which, uh, in my case, juniors and seniors were discussing this was really impressive. Um, they, they understand uh, probably a lot more than I was giving them credit for uh, when, when thinking about designing the lesson. I do highly recommend having a conversation with your administrator prior to broaching these subjects. In my experience, principals don't like to be surprised. Uh, but I just, I went into my boss and said, here's what I want to do. And he said, I totally support it. And, um, you know, the conversation may veer into government and politics, uh, and it did for us, uh, but you don't have to cut them off and, and you can still value their contribution. But I, I quite overtly steered them uh, back to the topic at hand, social justice, music, and poetry, which is the focus of the lesson. So my advice to teachers looking for ways to talk to your students about social justice issues would be to take your strength as a music teacher and find artistic ways to foster these difficult conversations. I'm still not an expert, but I'm pushing myself to learn more. And what we've all tried to do through this book is to find practical, accessible ways to encourage others to teach with heart and to make a real difference, a meaningful difference at a time that our students really need us and they really need what we bring to their education. Thanks. And everyone, you could, you could sense Ryan's uh, compassion and passion there, even in, in his short uh, blurb this evening. Thank you so much, Ryan, for sharing that with us. And you know, I, I'm convinced, even as I sit here listening to my colleagues, that one of the travesties of the arts and arts education is that sometimes we, we prepare towards an event and that's all we do. We, we never go beyond and really try to, if I could use Carlton's term here, to delve deeper aspect of, of, the, of the entire concept. What was really going on in society when this text came about, when the song came about? And I found that for us, the aliens, I, we just can't not do that part of the process anymore. We'll feel like completely naked. Um, that is an integral part of performing. Uh, reaching the hearts of the people back then so we could, you know, the hearts listening now can receive it. So thank you so much, Ryan. That's a very, very important module in this, in this book. Our next contributor brings an interesting dimension as he is a former band director. I believe that that background informed his choice for his module. Ryan Ellis is a jazz pianist and director of vocal music at Miami Art Studio in Miami, Florida. His ensembles have performed throughout the United States, including Carnegie Hall on numerous occasions. Yes, his wife is Cindy Ellis, who you heard from earlier, and they run an amazing program there at the Miami Arts uh, Studio. Ryan, thank you so much for your contribution, and please now share with our viewers your insights about teaching with heart. Well, first of all, thank you so much for being here, everyone. I'm so happy to, uh, to be able to speak to so many people from 
literally around the world. We see people from uh, Great Britain, from the islands, from all over the United States. It's amazing. Um, and it's humbling. Um, and as a band director, as Jason said, I'd like to say to Ryan Marsh that um, his module applies not just to the choral student, but actually to the to the band student as well, and the orchestra student, because um, the orchestrations on this album are, are phenomenal, uh, particularly in, in that piece. Um, so this is, a, this is a conversation that's to be had in not just the choir classroom, but in every discipline. Um, so I'm a jazz pianist and I started by teaching bands and never ever, ever dreamed that I would ever become a choir director. And actually, to be honest, other than lyrics and traveling lights, um, choir and band are very much alike. I know, I know that I'm not alone in coming to terms with my own privilege, especially this year in 2020. In fact, it was my own privilege, and my own assumptions that were the seeds that eventually grew into my first module, the orchestra family reunion. Uh, I was shocked when a very accomplished senior, future music major, could not name the instruments that were playing with us on stage for Duraflay's Requiem. To her, all of the strings were violins and all the brass were trumpets, the big, the big trumpets and the little trumpets. And rather than be judgmental, I began to assess all my students and found out that her ignorance was not the exception. In fact, it was the norm. We had done so much in the last four years. She was about to go represent our school, oblivious to the instruments around her. See, I assumed that she understood timbre from elementary or middle school music. And she informed me that the reason that she worked so hard in my classes in high school was that she never had the opportunity to have music in elementary or middle school. The band director inside of me literally felt like a failure. And I hope that I'm not a, the only one here in this session tonight that has ever failed their students. But this past summer, the same band director inside of me absolutely fell in love with the orchestration on the Aliens album. I saw an opportunity to design a module that would challenge my students and through the compendium, many students throughout the world to listen deeper to the orchestrations and familiarize themselves, not only with the instruments in the orchestra, but also with common doublings uh, between orchestra and choir, and just general composition techniques. So my first module addresses these complex, as complex aspects of music by simplifying it all the way down to instrument families. That's why it's called the instrument, uh, the uh, orchestra family reunion. And just identifying the timbres, and it builds into a discussion of orchestration and composition. I think my unit would be great for elementary school and middle school, um, but it's also great for secondary music classes and could even be used in, a, in an orchestration class in college. I've found that for my students, it's filled the knowledge gap between the kids who have experienced music and musical instruments and those who haven't had the opportunity to. My second module, a choral time machine, is intended for high school or even college level courses because it asks students to examine historical chant and compare and contrast it to modern call and response. After looking at both call and response and chant, the goal is to take an in-depth listen to a gorgeous piece from the Aeolians album, My Soul Has Found Refuge in Thee by Evelyn Simpson Currenton. And it's completely different. The entire sound of the, of the song is different than the whole rest of the Aeolians album. In the interview, you find out why it sounds so different. But quite frankly, the song could easily be skipped by an impatient teenager. Um, my students listened and they found that the piece has both historical and modern qualities uh, to it, which is why I called it a choral time machine. 
we related it to a song called Bon Se Abba. Um, we weren't really ready for a piece as in depth as uh, My Soul Has Found Refuge, especially in this situation that we find ourselves in. But I'm confident that no matter what level or music discipline you teach, you will absolutely found, find value in uh, this resource. And it's been an absolute pleasure to be a part of its creation. Thank you so much, Ryan. And, um, you know, again, the concept in the book helps you to easily relate the material to so many other pieces, songs, a whole another cadre of repertoire. And, and it, the way it's set up, it just helps you to extrapolate that concept and move it over to, to everything else. So thank you so much, Ryan. And, um, and you, you are not alone. I almost broke out into the Michael Jackson. You're not alone at times <laughs> uh, feeling like you failed your students in one way or the other, but, but, but you did the courageous thing and owned up to that and then tried to fill the gap. So thank you, thank you so much. Our next contributor, once you meet him, you cannot help but think, man, he's such a great guy. Ed Norris is the director of choral music at the Glen Cove High School. And they are very, very good. They have sung at many choral festivals, including uh, Music for All, the Town of the White House, the Song for Pope Francis. Ed is also director of the Metropolitan Youth Orchestra Chamber Chorale and an adjunct professor at the Aaron Copeland School of Music there in Queens. Ed has been my pleasure in getting to know you. And ladies and gentlemen, let me help you meet a great guy, Mr. Ed Norris. Thank you so much, Jason, for that welcome. My goodness. I was ready to hit some Michael Jackson with you. I was waiting, bro. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> well, thank you again, uh, Dr. Ferdinand, for that welcome. And good evening, everybody. Uh, such an honor to be here this evening uh, with this esteemed panel and certainly with all of you at home. Thank you for sharing part of your Sunday evening with us as we all try to uh, navigate the waters of the new norm. For me, during early quarantine back in March, April, May, I found myself too focused on what our students had lost, what we as conductors had lost, and I was having so much anxiety about what our programs would look like moving forward. Would we sing again? What would the group sound like? What would it look like? How could we do this safely? How can I be that person that my singers always run to? These are things I thought about daily and uh, certainly pervaded my thoughts and, and really you know, led me into some tough times. This school year, however, I've tried not to focus on what we have lost, but what we still have the opportunity to do and one of my quotes that are in the compendium is uh, that together with our students, we can turn this school year from one of our darkest times to our finest hour. This has been a time for me as a teacher to stop and smell the musical roses and focus on things that in, an, in a normal year with all the performing that our choirs do, I'm not able to always focus on. For example, we've been doing a lot more sight singing, ear training, and music theory in our rehearsals. I've also been doing a lot of guided listening assignments and things such as build your own uh, choral concert program. One of the things I have noticed, however, is that my students want the normalcy of rehearsing choral music. Uh, and the word normal, I put in quotes because on any given day, I have five to 10 kids in front of me and in one group, maybe 35 online, and in another group, probably about 70 to 75 online. So it's very, very difficult to give them that normalcy, but you know, we still rehearse our core music and we're still trying to proceed uh, as close to normal as possible. That said, the modules that exist in this compendium have been such a great help to me as I take this new journey together with my students. The work for my, with my colleagues uh, from all over the country truly has been motivating and inspiring. In my first module in the book, I focused on Ken Burton's Gospel Train. Uh, I'm a big fan of program music, and the first time I heard this piece uh, from the great Aeolian uh, CD that uh, dropped back in August, I was hooked. Uh, I couldn't wait to get my hands on the sheet music and start, you know, taking it apart. 
um, I was uh, certainly blown away with how Mr. Burton was truly able to paint the picture, um, not just textually, but uh, through music theory. So I have taken this piece and broken it down in terms of a theoretical aspect and have been doing lessons with both my concert choir and my chamber choir uh, on intro to music theory through this particular selection. I have noticed that when I go off on my theory tangents in choir, especially with the older kids, they're not nodding in, okay, we get what you're saying, move on, and, and they actually have no idea what I'm saying. They're nodding and also contributing to the discussion, and it, the, the root of that was this particular module for me. It helped me to feel a little bit more comfortable breaking down the walls of, of getting into theory with the choir or with the choirs. So um, we weren't just analyzing in terms of textual analysis, but now we are looking at uh, the pieces in terms of, of theoretical analysis. For example, um, you know, there might be a chord in, in, in uh, Mr. Burton's piece that say it's, uh, has a ninth in it, and I talk about that in the module, and, and the other day I was rehearsing um, Oh Love by Elaine Hagenberg, and there was a G9 chord, and I said, Altos, what do you have there? And one of my girls unmutes and says, oh, Mr. Norris, that's the ninth, and we've got to do this, and then it goes here. So it, um, you know, I just was able to nod and smile in thinking that this that was all possible because of teaching with heart. And it just, you know, uh, like I said before, helped me to feel comfortable in, in breaking down that wall of getting into theory uh, with my choirs. Another thing uh, that for me has, has uh, been missing during hybrid learning is connecting with my singers. With five or 10 students in front of me in any given period, it's really hard to get that I mean, certainly you got the one-on-one because -on -one you only have five kids in front of you. But, you know, when I'm teaching to those five and then I'm trying to worry about the 70 that are on the screen, it, uh, it can be somewhat challenging. And uh, when we're all in the choir room together in normal times, obviously, as you all know, we're going back and forth all period. So that has been something personally for me uh, that has really been missing. Through my second module, We Remember Them by Susan Labar, I have been connecting with our ensemble through the analysis of this piece in terms of the text, the way Ms. Labar set the text, and the way the Aeolians performed this piece on their current album. Much like Ryan Marsh's module, uh, this module has brought about some very, very emotional and deep discussion between my students and myself and in some instances, uh, parents that are home sitting next to their students as they learn virtually. I've had some parents chiming into uh, some of our discussions. We've talked about memorializing those who have been lost due to the horrific virus. We've talked about memorializing those who have been lost uh, in, in terms of social injustice. And um, how this particular piece, as well as the Aeolian recording, connects us to one another as well as connecting our message to the audience. Um, so it, uh, it really, again, broke down the wall and built a bridge to me and my students. Now, you might say, well, they're your students. Of course, they know you and they've had you for years. But we, in my district on Long Island in New York, we haven't been together all, all year. We are hybrid, some are in person, some are home. But both of these groups have never been together all at once. So we never had that opening you know ceremony where we all meet each other and talk and share our goals and get to know one another and sing together we've never had that so uh this piece and uh, dr ferdinand's recording really helped to bridge the gap if you will and um, I've, I've just had a great time uh, working with susan's piece and working with this particular module um again i thank you all for for being with us tonight and a very very big thank you to the unbelievable musicians, as well as their gifted conductor, who, ins who have inspired all of this. Dr. Ferdinand and his singers have had a dream and passion that made all of this possible. So Jason, a huge thank you to you, the folks at GIA for make also making this possible, and everybody that's with us tonight. Have a very, very happy holiday. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Ed. Thank you so much, Ed. While Ed was talking, I just kind of flipped over to uh, his first module. And at the end of every 
module, there's a section called heart to heart conversation questions. And these are, this is a test bank that Carlton so probably came up with that asks questions pertinent to the chapter itself or from the video. And here's one question in, in, at the end of Ed's module. In the verses of the gospel train, what mode is used? A, Lydian, B, Dorian, C, Phrygian, D, Mixolydian. And it's right here, easy to go and answer is mix, Mixolydian. And uh, thank you so much for, for, for that insight, uh, Ed. I often share with the aliens that there will be times when you will not feel like performing. It's kind of like a preacher who has to deliver a sermon every week. Many times they may mount that pulpit and the realities of life will be on their shoulders and they simply may not be in the mood. However, their role and their responsibilities or their gifting suggest that they must put that all aside and still lead the flock. I'm sure as arts directors, as choir directors, you can all attest to this. Our next contributor I saw firsthand when she conducted her choir at the Music for All National Festival just mere hours after burying her father. Hope Milthaler is a true representation of Brit. She's the director of choir for the King's Local School District in Ohio, and she holds degrees in conducting and music education. Hope, please, as your name suggests, share with the people your view on teaching with heart. Thank you, Jason. That was absolutely the most raw and pivotal time in my life. Um, one minute I was about to board a bus with my singers, ready to take Indie by Musical Storm, and in an instant my whole world shattered and became unrecognizable. And if it weren't for the principles of grit, which are gratitude, resilience, initiative, and team, if they weren't involuntary muscles for me, I know that I wouldn't have been in front of my singers 24 hours later. And I would have missed the rainbow because it was in that cathedral that my singers and I met the Aeolians and Jason Max Ferdinand. Well, if COVID has taught um, our students anything, it's that loss is universal. It knows no age um, and that we are promised nothing. They have to summon grit right now that's almost impossible. And while we're all grateful, you and I, all you educators out there, um, for the gift of being the ones to shepherd their hearts through this, it's exhausting to continually try to find those rainbows. So I just wanna share with you a few ways, well, a few more ways that this compendium can help you find those. Um, how is this space full of resilience even possible? for a senior musical theater superstar whose voice on the final solo of We Shall Overcome should have been heard by hundreds, not handfuls, and live and in person, not just on a computer screen. It's because we dove into module 9.1, and there we find moments of grit in the musical score itself. We heard from Robert Gibson, the arranger, um, we listen to and watch the Aeolians display their grit in performance, live performance, and we committed to emulating that as we overcame our own obstacles and decided that we were determined to strengthen even one heart in our audience, um, whether we could see them or not. Also, how is it that these 40 girls, you can't see them all because some are in the classroom, some are at home, instantly connected to each other and immediately calling each other family. It's because we pulled the slide sharing activity from module 12 and we chose the topic gratitude to share with each other who and what gave us hope to get through the grief and loss that we experienced during the solitude of quarantine. And how is it that these are the faces of singers, both in person and virtual, who prior to this moment have struggled to visibly connect with what they're singing? We worked so hard. Suddenly, they're overcoming it. And how are they doing that now when they don't even have any idea who they can share their song with? It's like, it's like there's no one listening sometimes. Well, it's because we cling to the step-by-step -step mission module process in 9.2. We build the structure with solfege and counts. We use the suggestions of all my amazing colleagues who have shared with you tonight to connect with the score and the text. 
all while bathing ourselves in the aural and visual delivery of the Aeolians. So I post these missions at the start of each piece and all of my students at any given moment in any given location, even if they've quarantined and come back, they never miss a beat. They're all on the same page at the same time and they never miss an experience. Um, and as a side note, I personally turned those steps into a quick and easy template for like copy and pasting and cutting. And it saved me so much time and energy. So I would be so happy to share that with anybody out there who wants it. Um, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just reach out to me. So here are my kids on mission together, both in and out of the classroom, singing Swordfish. As they begin learning, we remember them. to tell that those online kids are singing but but they are just a few beats behind of course <laughs> the true measure of anything that we bring to the table right now is the feedback from our students um, when i was invited to participate and contribute to this project just like you guys um, this past summer i was all consumed with building whatever boat would help us get through this storm and keep singing together whatever together was going to look like well imagine hearing this from one of your virtual learners right now. These modules have really connected the online students with the in-person students. As an online learner myself, knowing that we are all doing the same thing, despite our current circumstances, is a breath of fresh air in times like these. These modules are helping our choir grow even when we feel like we are stuck for the time being. Talk about rewarding. And I wanna leave you with this one though. In a single brush stroke, this student, having experienced elements of the module on We Shall Overcome, winds up succinctly summarizing the entire impetus behind teaching with heart. Just listen to her words demonstrate that this compendium underscored with Dr. Ferdinand's philosophy and the Aeolian's music will remain relevant beyond the current challenges. She says, in trying to make do with COVID, we've all come to realize how hard it is for our lives to become so overturned. In fighting for Black Lives Matter, for many of us, it is the start of the realization that our society has some really major flaws. It hurts, it really does, to have to face that our society, as we know it, is not actually how we knew it at all. And this song, it is a refuge in all of the crises going on around us. We will overcome this. We will get through this together. We will come out stronger. It will be okay. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but it will be okay. Thank you so much and good luck out there, everybody. Oh, that, that last talk was worth all the effort in putting this entire thing together. Wow. Um, we, have, we have about to land this plane and um, please have your questions ready uh, when we open up the floor. Uh, this next contributor um, is another young man that I taught all the way from high school to university, he went out, actually became a student of Cedric Dent and then came back to Oakwood University and is now the faculty here at Oakwood, kind of leading our music theory uh, area. And he also served as a producer for the Alien album. And he is a genius of a musician, a composer, an arranger, um, very quiet, very unassuming, but this is Professor Stephen Murphy, and uh, Stephen is a very deep intellectual thinker. And I'll, I'll Stephen uh, introduce you to the people literally from all over the world. Good to have. You. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good evening to everyone, um, and thank you for attending. First, I'd like to say thank you to Dr. Ferdinand and Alec Harris and the Aeolians for allowing me to serve as the producer of the Aeolians project and allowing us to share. Um, a different facet of the ADOS, or what we call American descendant of slaves and the overall black experience that um, everyone is not always privy to, which is choral music. Um, I would like to share a quick quote with you guys from one of my favorite poets um, by the name of Kamal Farid, also known as Q-Tip. 
He said, the thing that men and women, women need to do is stick together. Progressions can't be made if we're separate forever. It's simple, but yet profound. When we think about these separations, the lack of progressions, and social justice, we must consider what the root and cause is. Um, these invisible lines that create our caste systems, these invisible lines create caste systems in America. These systems or caste systems are artificial systems that we wrongfully give power and credence to. Tying that together with my module, um, the, a composition by Adolphus Harold Stark entitled Shout for Joy. Throughout the entire piece, the Aeolians exclaim the phrase, shout for joy. What that represents for me is the optimism that we have in deconstructing these said caste systems that currently keep us separated. The epitome of choral music and the epitome of music ed education overall is unity, harmony, and togetherness. It is with this in mind that we must teach and mold our students. Teaching with heart helps us to do just that, creating community and continuity throughout music education overall, allowing us to take our experiences and our realities of the world and create a social awareness for musicians, hopefully perpetuating holistic cultures within classrooms of the future. And these, this, my friends, is what we can use to make America truly great again, or tr great rather. Thank you. That boy is deep, that boy is deep, I tell you. Thank you so much, Stephen, and um, what a way to, to end the review of all the modules. And um, I'm looking through some of the names here. I see Professor Bruce Rogers from Mount Sac, one of my mentors. And Bruce is a perfect example of teaching with heart. I've seen him do it, and we've all experienced it um, throughout the years as his choirs performed so many times at the ACDA conventions, uh, whether regional or national. Um, we were so happy to get the endorsements of people like uh, Joe Michael Scheibe and Rollo Dilworth and Professor Shannon Jeffries and Professor Brandon Boyd, Ed McClary and Aaron Emerson, who is head of the uh, Diversity Committee now of ACDA. And thanks to all of them for taking the time to review the material and for endorsing. So at this time, we want to um, open up to a few questions. Uh, Alec will help us um, maneuver those as, as, as we answer a few questions and then send you on your Great. yeah way. please feel free again to add any questions to the q a uh, we'll go through some of these fairly quickly and some of them i think are pretty pretty deep and so uh we'll take them one at a time just one thing uh i think folks have asked is this a full curriculum and there are i think 13 different individual modules so the students so you get the course pack with uh that you can share with your students uh, there's uh, lots of plans, all the different components that got talked about, as well as the links to all of the videos. Anything else you want to say about, is this a full curriculum? Alec, if I could, um, I, I, it is the curriculum. It's definitely meant more as a supplementary, you know, to whatever your mission is and in, in what your choir or your ensemble is. But it is uh, something that you could use in its entirety. Uh, it's something that you could use as a supplement where you're maybe doing one one track a month or you want to do two and a quarter or uh but it, it's not intended to totally take over as a, a complete curriculum of, of you know what your year is going to be but it's uh, more of a tool that you can employ as you wish you can use small parts you can use large parts it's really open to modification and interpretation by each of you which is one of i think its greatest points of value so i hope that answered the question perfect thank you there is a, uh, a, from Aaron Mills, an amazing question, I thought, which is, says, uh, in this time of COVID, music educator roles in my area have become sparse, and hours for teaching have been cut significantly. I've had many experiences which I've had to uh, the awesome struggle of defending the importance of music education at our schools, defending with research and positive outcomes due to musical exposure in schools. What do you say to an administration that sees very little need to continue the arts due to budgetary cuts, but also for a lack of understanding as to the lifelong impact music has on all of us? Ed? Can I, can I say something to quickly? Just something that came into my head as, as um, Alec was reading that question. Such a, 
difficult question to even think about, right? Justifying what we do and why we do it. Um, one thing I would do is if, if you go on YouTube, uh, you heard Hope talking about the We Shall Overcome uh, that's on the Aeolians album. Dr. Ferdinand did a virtual choir with his singers uh, and that was the piece, We Shall Overcome, and they were all in the grids and, and it was, uh, there were images of, of, of people during the pandemic um, and it was one of the most powerful things I've ever seen. Show that to administ an administrator. Show that to an administrator. That's why we need music. Show Brian Stokes Mitchell, um, who is a Broadway actor, and, and these are on YouTube as well, Brian Stokes Mitchell leaning out of his apartment. Brian Stokes Mitchell also had COVID, leaning out of his, out of his balcony in his apartment in, in Manhattan, serenading the frontline workers every day at 7 p.m. In, in Manhattan. There was one, one of my favorite shows is Men of La Mancha. And uh, the one particular video I saw on Facebook was Brian Stokes Mitchell, who played Quixote in the revival, singing Impossible Dream. I'm talking about weeping. Oh, I couldn't contain myself. Show that to an administrator. That's why we need music. That's why our kids need our music. That's just my two cents. Beautiful. Anyone else want to take that question? So Victoria Kerper asks, again, thank you for putting this all together. She's trying to, uh, to connect with her students on this 100% virtual model of learning. Do any of you have any advice on just building those connections? Is there any specific section of the resource that you would want to point her to? And she says basically most of her students are minorities and she herself is a white woman. Carlton or Danny, you want to jump in there, Richard? Um, sure. Um, well, I, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'll go first, Ritter, and then you can go. Ritter and I are really good friends, so uh, uh, I would say that you, you have to meet students where they are, and acknowledging your differences is the first step. I taught at a very diverse school in the Orlando, Florida area, large Latino population, large African American population, pretty evenly balanced, and that led led us to places where we could come together and figure things out. So you can feel free to acknowledge your privilege and your your experience and meet them where they are. And music is the great connector. It's the universal language. So Ritter, take it from there. Uh, thank you, Carlton. <laughs> um, I just recently did a presentation with uh, Brittany Boykins and Dr. Jeremy Wiggins on diversity and inclusion in the classroom and it was, it was great to see just the makeup of educators were pre predominantly white and they're asking questions of, well, how do I take this and teach inside of inner city schools? And I think the first thing, and Carlton just hit it um, perfectly, is you want to be authentic with everything you do. Um, children these days, they have access to so much information, it's at their fingertips. So um, authenticity and truth can always be checked in a moment's notice. I think sometimes we, we feel as if that when we try and put on someone else's lens or try and walk in someone else's shoes, I, we have to kind of, I hate to use this word, but appropriate it to something that they feel something that would they be comfortable to. But I think we as teachers have to recognize that if we are the minority in our classroom, if, the, if, if we're listening to, if they're listening to hip hop and R&B and things of that nature, we have to find ways to like, okay, how am I gonna reach a community who this is what they're listening to and make them interested in what I'm doing. And I think that's just authenticity, not saying that we're trying to take over or put our own kind of explanation on what they're doing, but to say, hey, I've listened to this, I've, I've got this, and I understand what you're going through, and taking that and kind of molding it in, in, in true authentic form and truth to say, hey, um, this is what this can do in classical music, or this is what this can do with hip hop music or anything of that nature. It's just trying to be authentic about your approach to everything, I think is something that we all can do as educators. Great. We have one more question, which is, how are you planning to do recruiting during this COVID world while still addressing the climate, the current climate solutions for future students? Are there any thoughts about uh, in this environment, how to recruit more people to take part in your, our music programs? 
that's an excellent question. Uh, who can I put on the spot? Ed, you, you go ahead, Ed. Hi, yeah. I know um, for me, I've already talked to my middle school uh, or junior high school uh, theater program, and I've talked about going down there uh, to visit with some of their rehearsals and just be present in the school. Um, I also plan on going into their Google Classroom meets and, uh, you know, talking a little bit about the high school program and, and what we have going on. I know in our uh, band and orchestra program, I've encouraged my colleagues to do the same. And uh, they're both going down to the junior high school and, uh, and joining their meets as well as we get into recruitment season in January, February, March. So that's just some of the things that I do. I'm also very visible in the high school. I'm always in the hallways and things like that. The tough part now is in a school, we have a small school, it's only about 1,200. Um, and, and on any given day, we've got 100 kids in the school, 150 kids in the school. So even though I'm present in the school, it's hard to reach everybody that I want to reach. So that's tough. Um, I'm also very present in the guidance office. You know, the people that, that, oh, you have a free period? Yeah, try mixed chorus, try, you know, this, try music theory. So um, make, make friends with your guidance counselors, make nice nights nice with the guidance counselors and, uh, and get involved at, at the level that is, um, you know, under, under your jurisdiction, whether it's junior high school or elementary, just try to be present. Just try to be present. That would be my, my advice. And hi, Dr. Leck. <laughs> we have one more question. How do you deal with students who are not interested at all in the subject and a curriculum that lacks structure in your country, as someone from out of uh, the country. For example, teaching secondary students who have never done music before with, with students who have been exposed from a younger level. So in other words, multiple uh, levels of uh, abilities with your, in your class situations. Who wants to take a shot of that? Um, I will, I, I have in my choir, uh, I have mentorship program with section leaders where some of my stronger singers that have had experience with me, of course, in person, have a real passion for music and, and for mentoring. And I really give them that leadership role of, of mentoring. And in the hybrid situation, I've, I've had them you know, record their parts because I know that they're, they're solid singers and um, sharing those parts with their, with their friends and leading sectionals. We do breakout rooms with sectionals and, and that really helps to foster that, that kind of uh, peer mentorship, you know, with the kids that do have the resources and perhaps the, the history of music, you know, they've taken lessons or they've been in children's choirs uh, with students that maybe have come uh, from a background with no choir in middle school. So this would be referring to, to high school. So that really just providing that leadership to some, some of my students uh, um, really helps us to bring, to, to feel together in this hybrid situation and gives them a challenge. And um, I, I see a lot of results from, uh, from my, my weaker students just being able to listen to their recordings and, and uh, improve, so. Great. And can I just really quickly add that I think that when you have a mixture of students, you've got to acknowledge it. Again, tie back to what we're talking about being authentic, you know, we're dealing with different levels and treat those students who aren't interested, positivity, positivity, positivity. The, the more you pay attention to them and the more you love on them, and, and you know, sometimes we can't reach them all, but there are students that really, their disaffectation is more that they're just disaffected by school in general because they think that maybe adults aren't seeing them. So let them know they're seen. And I think that's a huge motivator for many students. And then their love for chorus comes after that because they love you. So be, be a positive person in their life, I think is a key element. Great. Okay, I think that uh, covers all the questions that have come in on the Q&A. Is there anything else, Jason, you wanna add? Well, Alec, um, you know, even just listening to the questions, listening to the answers, um, just tonight alone has just made me further uh, decide to bolster my resolve and being the best um, educator I can be. And Ariane, to your question earlier about administrators trying to cut the arts, it was my professor, Ed McClary, who made a statement in one of his speeches, and I, I, I've adapted it. He says, our society needs the arts just like we need air and food. Great. Um, 
this book helps to address so many societal changes and we, we assure you that it will be the ignition to so many wonderful things in all your ensembles. So go to the GIA website and pick up your copy and all that comes with it, the video pack that comes with it and question banks, delve deeper is all right here in Teaching with Art. Thank you so much everyone for coming out tonight, really. Thank you all, really appreciate it. Thank you, Jason, thanks to all the panelists. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your Sunday. Thank you so much for your amazing contributions. And we'll see you on the road, hopefully soon, when we get on the other side of COVID. Yay. Take care. Stay safe out there, everybody. Stay safe. Stay safe.